Hi, and welcome back to Coco Sleep, a podcast of original children's bedtime stories and meditations designed to make bedtime a dream. Hang on to your bedposts. Tonight, we're coming face to face with a dragon. But you know by now, this dragon isn't scary or dangerous. He's friendly, curious, and actually really rather sleepy. I'm so happy to reveal that tonight we have a brand new Jupiter Twins story for you. So climb into bed and lie down ready to fully relax and clear all those thoughts from your head. Except those ones about magic, mild mischief and clever spells. Our tale starts when the twins find an intriguing book hidden in the school's storage vault. A clue inside the book leads them to a clock tower where they find the enchanted sleeping dragon. This is Jupiter Twins, The Sleeping Dragon by Gillian Rogerson. Lily and Jake Jupiter were having a wonderful time at the Leora School of Magic. Not only had they met enchanted beings such as mermaids, centaurs and unicorns, but they'd also made many friends. Every day at the school was a new adventure. As well as their magic lessons, the pupils had household duties to attend to. The head teacher, Dr. Eleanor Howard, considered cleaning tasks to be just as important as learning magic spells. She said, Pleasure could be found in mundane matters as well as exciting endeavours. And, if one calmed their minds and became present in the moment, even cleaning windows could be a relaxing activity. The pupils at the school weren't as convinced as the head teacher was about housework, but nonetheless they took to their tasks with optimism. Yet, there was one task that no one wanted to do. Cleaning the storage vault. Every time Dr. Howard asked for volunteers, the pupils would look away from her searching gaze and offer to do something else instead. Jake had noticed the disappointed look in the teacher's eyes when no volunteers stepped forward. So when she asked again about the storage vault, he put his hand up and said he would clean it and his sister would help him. Lily was about to say she'd rather do something else, but seeing the delighted look on Dr. Howard's face, she smiled and said she couldn't wait to make a start on the storage vault. A few days later, the twins headed towards the storage vault with their cleaning bags in their hands, ready to tackle their task. Lily said, I wish we had something more exciting to do. I liked cleaning the stained glass windows in the Great Hall and looking at the stories in the glass. And I like making hot drinks for the teachers because we got to go into their offices and have a chat with them. That was fun. But I'm not sure about sweeping the floors of the vault. It doesn't sound very exciting, does it? Jake shrugged. It could be fun. Think about all the pupils who have been to these vaults before. Elves, fairies, centaurs, gnomes and griffins. I bet some of them cleaned it too. Lily brightened up. Yes, that's true. I wonder if they use magic. I wish we could use magic. Not for all the cleaning, but maybe one spell to make it more fun. They reached the storage vault and arrived at an old wooden door. They heard a fluttering noise behind them and turned around to see a white butterfly flying towards them. 
The butterfly landed on the door and became still. There was a message written on its wings. It was from the head teacher. Dear Jake and Lily, thank you for offering to clean the storage vault. It hasn't been cleaned for a long time and bearing this in mind, I will allow you to use three magic spells to help you with this task. I trust you will choose your magic spells wisely. Kind regards, Dr. Howard. Jake grinned at his sister and said, Look, Lily, it looks like your wish has come true. Lily grinned back and said their cleaning work was about to become a lot more exciting. The white butterfly flapped its wings twice and disappeared. Jake pushed the door open. It creaked loudly. The twins stepped through the door and into the huge vault that ran the length of the school. The ginormous room had a red brick ceiling that was held up by stone pillars. Lines of wooden bookshelves stood like soldiers across the floor, and further along, tables were piled high with boxes. The twins were expecting a musty smell to come from the storage room, but they were pleasantly surprised to feel a warm breeze flow gently around them. The soft wind held a hint of outdoor freshness, and the twins inhaled a soothing scent that was fragranced with summer flowers and freshly cut grass. A twinkling cloud of fireflies flew through the open door and fluttered towards the curved ceilings. They landed on the ceiling and settled there, illuminating the way ahead for the twins. Lily said, I feel like I'm in a magical world. Me too, Jake agreed. A peculiar expression crossed Jake's face. Lily noticed it and knew what it meant. Her brother was getting a strong feeling about something. She asked him what he was thinking. Something amazing is going to happen today, Jake said. He gave her an embarrassed smile. I don't know what but it's got something to do with the history of the school and something that's been hidden for a while. I could be wrong, but it's just a feeling I've got. Lily said she trusted his feelings. She suggested they explore the large room first before getting on with their cleaning work. They headed towards the tables and looked at the boxes piled on them. According to the labels, the boxes contained old textbooks and school records. Some boxes held lost items which had never been claimed by anyone. Lily peeped inside one of the lost property boxes, hoping to find something interesting but only saw a school scarf and hat. The twins walked towards the bookshelves and looked at the old books. Jake read some of the titles and said, I'd love to read these. I wonder if Dr. Howard will let me borrow some later. I'm sure she will. Lily ran her finger along the line of books and looked at her fingertips. She said, It's not very dusty in here, and the floor looks quite clean, too. I don't think it will take us long to finish our work. She took a yellow cleaning cloth from her bag of supplies and flapped it in the air. A twinkle alighted in Jake's eyes. 
and he said it was time to make the cleaning work fun. He asked Lily if there was a spell she would like to use. Lily looked at the cloth, then at the shelves. She knew which spell would be perfect. Lily held the cleaning cloth out and recited the words to the spell. The yellow duster lifted from her hand and twirled around in the air. Small yellow specks flew out of the duster. The specks turned into little yellow feathers. The feathers grew bigger and then flew off in all directions. The yellow feathers landed on the boxes, tables and bookshelves and moved back and forth in a cleaning motion. They even flew towards the ceiling and gave it a good dusting too. The Jupiter twins watched in delight as the yellow feathers cleaned the whole of the vault. When the cleaning had been completed, Lily brought the spell to an end, and the yellow feathers vanished. She plucked the floating duster from the air and put it back into her cleaning bag of supplies. All done, she said proudly. Not quite, Jake said. He pointed to the floor and said they needed to give it a clean too, and he knew just the right spell that would help. He closed his eyes, and his forehead creased in concentration, as he tried to remember the right words. He cast his spell, opened his eyes, and grinned at Lily. Out of nowhere, an item appeared on the floor near their feet. Lily said, It looks like our vacuum cleaner at home. That's not very magical, Jake. You haven't seen what it can do yet, her brother replied. The vacuum lit up and hummed gently. It turned slowly around and began to move forward. Jake said, It will pick up every bit of dust in super fast time. Watch this. He clicked his fingers. The magical vacuum cleaner zoomed across the floor like a race car. Off it went, rushing to the very end of the huge room. When it got to the end, it spun around and zoomed back towards the twins. Um, Jake, Lily said, it's heading towards us really quickly. Will it stop when it gets closer? Jake nodded confidently. The vacuum sped straight towards them and showed no signs of slowing down. Jake was no longer confident that the machine would stop. So he grabbed his sister's hand and the twins ran out of the way. The vacuum spun around and went after them. It must think we're dust too, Lily said as they ran along. Jake, you have to stop it. Use another spell. Jake called out a stopping spell. The vacuum rushed towards a shelf of books and at the last moment, it stopped and gently bumped into the shelf. With a puff of smoke, the vacuum cleaner vanished. One of the books on the top shelf wobbled slightly and started to fall. With lightning-quick reflexes, Jake ran forward and caught the falling book. Phew! That was close. He looked at the book in his hands. Hey, Lily, look at this book. It's all about dragons. Lily went over to her brother and looked at the picture on the cover. 
It showed a cream-coloured dragon with emerald green eyes, flying over green fields and towards some snow-capped mountains. Jake knew how much his sister loved dragons, so he passed the book to her so she could have a closer look. As he did so, a piece of folded paper fluttered free from the pages of the book. The paper hovered in midair and unfolded itself. The twins stared in amazement as a tiny cream-coloured dragon flew out of the paper and circled the twins. It had emerald green eyes. Something else magically appeared from the paper. It was a building. The twins almost didn't recognise it at first, but as it grew bigger, they saw it was Leeds Town Hall, the very building that stood on the ground above the school. The tiny dragon flew towards the clock tower of the building and rested on the side of it. The dragon closed its eyes, fell asleep, and melted into the stonework of the tower. A second later, the town hall disappeared, taking the sleeping dragon with it. Lily looked at her brother in surprise. She said, How did you make that happen? I didn't do anything, Jake replied. It happened all on its own. Lily, I think this is why I had a weird feeling earlier. I think we were meant to find this book and see that dragon. But what does it mean? Lily asked. Jake shrugged. They discussed the matter for a few minutes, but couldn't make any sense of it. They decided to take the book to their head teacher. They were certain she would know what it all meant. The paper that had flown free from the book was still hovering in the air, so Lily grabbed it and put it back inside the book. The twins left the vault and headed towards the head teacher's office. They weren't that surprised to see Dr. Howard waiting outside her office as though she were expecting them. The head teacher smiled at the twins and said, You found something, haven't you? I had a feeling you might. Lily gave her the book and told her about the dragon and the town hall. Dr. Howard took the piece of paper from the book, unfolded it and looked closer. She said that whatever enchantment had been used on the paper was a one-off and the small dragon was unlikely to appear a second time. She asked the twins to tell her again exactly what they had seen. The twins did so. The head teacher shook her head in disbelief and muttered to herself, It can't be. I thought it was just a legend. And why would it appear now? Unless... She looked at the twins and broke into a big smile. Unless you two were meant to find it. I realise I'm not making any sense. Let me explain. Dr. Howard told them about the early days of the school and when it was first built. Stones were gathered from nearby caves and used in the fabric of the building. It is thought that one of the stones was a magical one and contained an enchanted sleeping dragon. 
When the stone was put in place, the dragon woke up and became visible. He was a friendly dragon and told the head builder about a secret portal in the clouds that led to the land of dragons. The dragon was the only one who knew the way, but he could carry a couple of people on his back and that would allow them to enter the land, too. The kind-hearted dragon offered to take the builder to the mystic land. Off they flew, and when the builder arrived, he was amazed at what he found. Not only did he meet many dragons who told him fascinating stories about their rich history, but he was also given magical gifts that he took back to the school and gave to the head teacher. Jake couldn't help himself from interrupting and asked, What kind of gifts? Dr. Howard replied, That's what we don't know. We don't know much about the sleeping dragon at all apart from what I have just told you. This story has been passed down through the ages, until it has become more like a myth than something that actually happened. If it is true, we don't know if the sleeping dragon decided to stay in the land of dragons for good, or if he stayed in Leeds, perhaps somewhere near the school, or in the school somewhere. Let me check something. Come into my office. She went into her office and the twins followed her. Dr. Howard waved her hands in the air and a dozen floating maps appeared. Some of them looked like antiques, the head teacher swiftly examined the maps, and with a click of her fingers, she made them vanish. Dr. Howard said, It seems that part of the magical stone that held the sleeping dragon was used later in the construction of the town hall, specifically the clock tower. I don't know who left this book in the vault, because I've never seen it before. Perhaps the first head teacher of the school left it there and placed an enchantment on it so that it only became visible to the right people at the right time. She smiled at them. And that means the book was waiting to reveal itself to you, Jake and Lily. What for? We don't know yet. Jake and Lily looked at each other. They had the same question in their minds. Lily said, Do you think the sleeping dragon is in the clock tower right now? And we can wake it up? The head teacher nodded and said she wasn't sure how they were going to find the dragon or how they would wake him up, but she was sure the twins would think of something. She gave them the book and said she had every faith in them. Jake said, You want us to find the sleeping dragon now, and to wake it up? Dr. Howard nodded and added, Yes, and... If he offers to take you to the land of dragons, you have my permission to go. Make sure you're back in time for supper, though. It's strawberry trifle for dessert tonight. You don't want to miss that. And, of course, you must use any spells you feel necessary on your journey. You could start with a revealing spell to help you find the hidden doorway that will take you to the clock tower. She gave them a look to say they were dismissed. 
The twins left the office, closing the door behind them. They looked at each other, not sure what to say. Jake said, I guess we're heading to the clock tower then. Shall I do the revealing spell for the hidden door? Lily said yes. She opened the book and carefully looked at the pages. They were all blank. How peculiar. Jake recited the words of the spell and waited for something to happen. There was a noise of moving stone behind them. The twins turned around and saw a section of the wall moving to one side. A set of curved stone steps were revealed, which were moving upwards like the stairs on an escalator. The twins stepped onto the moving stairs and were taken upwards. A minute later, they arrived inside the clock tower. They looked out of the open sections at the streets of Leeds below them. They turned their attention to the sleeping dragon and started to examine the stonework of the tower. Their hearts were full of hope that they would find something. It was Lily who spotted something first. At the bottom of a stone column, she discovered a small engraving of a dragon. He looked like the one they had seen earlier flying in the storage vault. He was curled up with his head resting on his tail. His eyes were closed. Lily took Jake by his arm and pulled him closer to show what she had found. Some instinct made Lily run her hand gently over the engraving. She whispered, Wake up! The small dragon opened his eyes. They were as green as emeralds. He yawned and stretched out his arms and legs. He looked at Lily and Jake. He smiled and gave the twins a friendly wave. The twins waved back. The dragon let out another yawn. And then he began to grow. He grew and grew. He grew so big that he had to wrap himself around the outside of the clock tower. He popped his head through an open window and grinned at the twins. The people on the streets below didn't notice the dragon and carried on with their day. The dragon stopped growing and introduced himself. His name was Zavara, which he told them meant sleepy. The twins gave their names. Lily held the book up and said they'd found it in the storage vault. With a smile, Zavara said it was his idea to leave the enchanted paper inside the book. He told them how he'd met the man who was in charge of building the school many, many years ago, and how he'd taken him through a magic portal to the land of the dragons. Whilst they were there, the man was given precious gifts by the dragons, which he brought back to the school. The twins nodded eagerly and said their head teacher had told them the same thing, but she wasn't sure it was true or a myth. Zavara said, It's true. I remember it well. 
The gifts were used in the school, but the elderly dragon, who gave the builder his first gift, was concerned there would come a time when more gifts would be needed for the school. I promised the elderly dragon I would leave a clue inside a book for when that happened. So I created that book that you're holding, Lily, and I put a spell on it. Once that was done, I curled up in my enchanted stone and fell asleep. I love sleeping, and I've had thousands of wonderful dreams. Would you like to know what gifts the builder was given? The twins nodded again. The green-eyed dragon smiled kindly and said, I can tell you what he was given, or I can show you. Would you like to come with me to the land of the dragons? Do you have permission from your head teacher to leave the school? Yes, and yes, Lily replied eagerly. The dragon said all would be revealed soon. He lowered his back and the twins climbed on. They were soon airborne and flying over the city of Leeds. No one looked their way. The dragon flew towards some fluffy clouds and went through the middle of them. When they came out of the other side, the twins were no longer in Leeds, but in a different world. Lush green fields lay below them, and not far away, they could see snow-capped mountains. Flying around the mountains were dozens and dozens of dragons in a variety of bright colours. More dragons were lying on the grass and basking in the sunshine. As they got closer to the mountains, the twins saw caves carved into the side of them. The caves were homes and had dragon families living inside. There were dragons everywhere, and Lily's face was a picture of happiness. Zavara came to a smooth stop at the foot of the mountain. Dragons swooped down from the sky and landed at his side. Resting dragons got up from the grass and hurried over to him. They welcomed the dragon and his visitors warmly. The chattering dragons stood to one side to let an elderly dragon walk through. She looked at the dragon with green eyes and welcomed him back. She said to the twins, Ah, I see the time has come when your school is in need of magical gifts again, and you two have been chosen to collect them. May I ask your names, please? Lily was too in awe of the dragon to speak, so Jake gave their names. The elderly dragon noticed the book Lily was holding and asked where she had got it from. She was still unable to speak, so Zavara explained. The elderly dragon said it would be perfect for carrying the gifts back to the school. She said she would supply the first gift and asked Lily to open the book. Lily opened the book and continued looking at the dragon in wonder. The dragon said, 
My first gift is Dragon's Whisper. She let out a slow, long breath and created a shimmering cloud of sparkling water droplets. The droplets floated over to the book and gently landed on the page where they formed an image of the elderly dragon with the words Dragon's Whisper underneath it. The dragon told Lily to give the book to her head teacher when they returned to the school and she would know how to collect the dragon's whisper from the page and store it in jars so it could be used as an ingredient in magic spells. The other dragons stepped forward one by one and added more gifts to the book. A smile from a tree. A mountain's chuckle. Magical morning dew. The evening song from a river. A promise from a bluebird. And many more. Each time a gift was given, a picture appeared in Lily's book with the name of the gift. It wasn't long before the pages were filled with magical ingredients. When the last gift was given, the green-eyed dragon told the twins it was time to head back to school. Lily and Jake thanked the kind dragons for their gifts. The elderly dragon said they must come back again soon and they would give the twins another gift, a book of dragon stories that were full of adventure and mystery. The twins said they would love that and thanked the dragons again. The green-eyed dragon lowered his back and the twins climbed on. They soared upwards and headed towards a bank of fluffy clouds. They flew through the clouds and when they came out of the other side, they were back in Leeds and flying towards the clock tower of the town hall. The dragon landed on the side of the building and the twins jumped into the tower. Their head teacher was waiting for them. The twins told her everything and Lily handed the book over. Dr. Howard smiled as she flicked through the pages. She said... We've had these ingredients in the school for years. I had no idea they had come from the dragons. You too found this book at the perfect time because we were running low on those ingredients and I didn't know where to get any more from. I'll gather them from the book and store them in the appropriate containers. You'll be using some in your advanced magic lessons soon. Thank you for collecting these. I shall see you downstairs in the dining hall soon. She said thank you to the green-eyed dragon and walked down the stone steps. Lily and Jake looked at the dragon. He was starting to grow smaller. He hopped into the clock tower and sat at the children's feet. The twins sat next to him. The dragon yawned and said it was time for him to sleep. 
But now that the twins knew where he was and how to wake him up, they could come back and see him any time, and they could have more adventures together. He rested his tired body against the stone pillar where Lily had first found him. He continued growing smaller and smaller. He leaned against the stone, melted into it, and became an engraving again. He closed his green eyes, and fell asleep. The twins returned to the school and went to the dining hall to join their friends. Later on, as Lily snuggled down in her bed, she thought about the wonderful dragons she had met. A soft smile settled on her face and she sighed happily. She closed her eyes and gently drifted into a deep sleep. She dreamed of magical dragons and endless adventures. <laughs>